All right, so now we're joined by Jean Cole Wells, who's running for King County Council, District 4. So go ahead with a two-minute introduction. Thank you, Jeff, and all of you for having me here tonight. Uh, I'm very excited about running for King County Council, District 4. It seems rather strange to say that. Uh, that I have been encouraged by Larry Phillips so about a year ago to think about running if he were not to run. And since he made the announcement, he's been encouraging me, as have many other people, and I started thinking about how exciting this would be. I'm a lifelong learner, and this new position would bring new challenges to me. And as I started thinking more and more about it, it really hit home to me that there's a lot that one can do serving in local government, that one has a much more difficult time in accomplishing in, the, in a legis the legislative session. I think that the legislature with 147 members all striving to get their bills through, um, as more abstract, we certainly achieved things. I've been very successful. I've had eight bills pass the legislature so far, and another one that may very well pass, so I really do well in having legislation enacted, but it's more abstract. We have lobbyists before us and advocates, bless their hearts, but at the local level, it's right there. It's not as abstract, it's more concrete. You see people who have needs with regard to finding affordable housing and finding a home, um, mental health issues with racial disproportionality, in the juvenile justice system. There are all sorts of policy issues that I will find very uh, fascinating and continuing in my traditions, but at the local level. So I'm very excited about them. Great. So now we have our four prepared questions. These are two minute answers. And I think we're starting with Elizabeth, number one. So, what are the goals for regional transportation, and how do you plan to work with other jurisdictions to achieve those goals? My goals or objectives for regional transportation and transit are to further the mobility for our citizens and be able to do that in a multimodal way. We do, not, we do need improvements in our infrastructure, certainly, and we know that with our bridges and uh, even our highways, as well as the rural roads, but we also need more multimodal measures so that pedestrians can get around more easily, more safely, certainly bicyclists as well, which we are making improvements in. We need a lot more transit. I would very much like to be on the Sound Transit Board and would request that the county executive, Doug Constantine, appoint me to that. And we have to get opportunities uh, realized for bringing in more revenue that's needed, particularly with our transit and bus systems. Uh, I forgot to mention, it's actually right there if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Uh, David, number two. <clears throat> uh, County Executive Dow Constantine has announced his Best Start for Kids initiative, which calls for a more holistic approach to human service funding for young children. How can King County seek sustainable funding and public policy changes to meet this aspirational rhetoric? Well, I think having more programming and uh, opportunities for young children is a really critical uh, endeavors for us. And it's happening at the city level. We're certainly trying at the state level. And I know with uh, the county executive's announcement, he's planning on, I believe, a six-year levy uh, to be able to accomplish the objectives. I don't know a whole lot more than that at this point. But as I have worked on early learning issues the whole time I've been in the legislature, I think that having a concerted approach with the local governments in the King County uh, region, which is 12, excuse me, it's 2 million people and a whole lot of local governments working with Seattle, of course, and the legislature, we can accomplish uh, the objectives that are being put forward. Great. John, number three. The uh, county council often must build consensus with the cities and the state. 
Where do you see opportunities for consensus? And where do you see opportunities for improvement? I'm very used to working on consensus building and working collaboratively as I do that as a legislator with local governments, particularly in my case, the city of Seattle. The, there are many challenges in doing that. The local governments uh, with their public officials do come to Olympia every year during the legislative sessions and meet with us. But unfortunately, those legislators from the city of Seattle really only hear from Seattle legislators, city council members. And I am very excited about having the opportunity to work completely directly with all of the local jurisdictions and within the King County jurisdiction. Uh, what I have heard about the county council and what I have observed is it does very well regionally, but it does not do so well locally. I know the council is meeting or holding meetings in various parts of the county rather than having all meetings at the county courthouse, and I, I applaud that effort. I would certainly encourage that more of that be done. We need, I, mean, I certainly, in representing Council District 4, which is all contained within Seattle, would be able to learn a lot more by going out to the communities. Larry Phillips has indicated that one of his favorite things to do is to do exactly that and make visits out in the local jurisdictions such as Eastern King County, East King County, South King County, and so forth, so that he can hear more firsthand. So I see it as a real opportunity, not easy to accomplish, but the structure certainly is in place to be able to do that. Right, Clayton, number four. Boy, I'm cold trains travel the length of the fourth council district. What is your strategy to deal with these trains? The Oil Transportation Safety Act was passed at the very end of the regular session of the legislature last Friday. I voted for it. I think all senators do. Uh, it was not an easy uh, time uh, leading up to that, and there was a lot of compromise being able to get this legislation passed. And what we had to face at that time was trying to balance our need for public safety in getting something through uh, and not waiting to have some disaster strike and knowing that we did not do something. Uh, we're trying to get the best legislation forward, which we did not do, but it is <coughs> a start. I spoke over and over on the Senate floor when we had the bills come through from the House and the Senate line about the huge risk associated with transport of flammable oil, particularly, as I gave an example repeatedly, the uh, derailment under the Magnolia Bridge. I think it's 32 gallons of flammable oil is in each car that goes through. So it's really imperative that we do that. But we need to have planning uh, at the regional levels with the county as well as at the local levels of the cities and with the state to make sure that everything goes smoothly. And that we do <coughs> what we need to do. We can't sit back and, and maintain that we can't solve what we have not. It's a, it's a very dis dangerous situation. Great. So now we'll open up to follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. Uh, and I've got a question. So you, I'm excited to hear that you um, mentioned that you'll request to be on the Sound Transit Board. So I'm curious um, if you go into more detail about um, what your um, sort of vision for Sound and Transit would be, and specifically Sound Transit 3 next year is seeking authority from the legislature right now. And sort of you're, you're straddling the two right now as a candidate, yeah. so I'm curious <laughs> if you could speak to that as a, as a policymaker. We definitely are. And I'm not serving on the Transportation Committee. I haven't for a long time. I'm on the Senate Ways and Means Committee instead. But I believe that we need to authorize, 
make the full authorization for South Transit of $15 million, which is in the House proposal instead of the $12 million that is in the Senate proposal. I did attend the event at the University Station by the stadium a week ago Friday afternoon, and it's very exciting to see the progress that's being made. But we need to serve this district, too. Uh, we need to have some tr Transit 3 go to Ballard in some form or another. I actually, working with leading citizens in Ballard, when Sound Transit first was defeated on the ballot, the RTA, and then the next year when it passed to set up Sound Transit, uh, I was the co-convener of 21 local <coughs> jurisdictions uh, to uh, work on this, and I think because of that, Ballard supported the RTA and started Sound Transit. But we were promised a provisional Sound Transit uh, station in Sunset Hill, which has never been realized. So we need to do a lot more. Uh, I'm going to ask a follow-up along the same lines if you're on the 10 cards. Uh, I am, you know, one of the challenges with SC3 is that we're going to have to, we're going to be fighting for transit in Ballard, but also in West Seattle. And uh, there's, it sounds like to me like a lot of the talk at the city and county level right now is, well, if we don't get all of the funding or if we can't do it with the 15, then we may have to do either Ballard or West Seattle as we continue to move out to Everett or Tacoma. And my question would be, do you think that's the right approach or should we ensure that we try to do in or out and make sure that we service both Queen Anne, or sorry, both Ballard and West Seattle first, if it means delaying extension to Tacoma or to Everett? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a tough question, and I have to say I've got to learn about that because I, like I said, I haven't been on the transportation in quite a while. And I, from what I know, there are some very compelling arguments for either course to take. Uh, but that's what I'll learn about when I'm elected and hopefully start serving on, on the board. But we, I mean, do we need to do it all? So, but we have to get that 15 million. So I'm going to ask another question where you're bridging state and local government, and that's around health care uh, reform and integration efforts. So, um, you know, we have implemented health care reform and uh, moving towards full integration at the state level, and we're also trying to do that at a local level. And just as at the state, the difference between rural and urban, the different populations, how do you imagine doing that and in a county seat where you have to make sure that we're doing good work in East King County and good work in downtown Seattle. How do you see us being effective at doing good health care transformation work? Well, I think with that, as well as any issue, uh, this is what's most intriguing to me about being on the county council now. From what I have understood, most ordinances or most motions uh, that uh, are passed for ordinances come about on a nine to nothing vote, um, mostly, not always, because there are only nine members on the county council and they have more time with legislation than we do at mm -hmm. the state level, then consensus is reached. And that I find that particularly appealing. And as a county council member, if I am uh, able to be elected, just like with the legislature, Seattle isn't the only jurisdiction in the whole state, and we have to be working with our colleagues all around the state. And with county council, it would be the same thing. I would want to and need to be responsible to working on what is important throughout the county. Now, I'm not answering the question on health uh, integration directly, but that's the way I see that and the other issues. What do you think we can learn from uh, Vancouver, BC in terms of planning process? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that at this point. We're, I mean, mm -hmm. Seattle and uh, Kent County and elsewhere are contemplating major growth. Vancouver has been doing. I know that when I 
visited there, it seems to be mapped out very well. And I believe that with the council work, looking at the different cities when a research is done, who are other ones would be very important to do. But that's not an area that I have worked on myself to be sufficiently articulate. So. Got another one, and this is a total softball. But uh, now that you've <laughs> yeah, you've been in the legislature for for over 20 years, uh, and um, if elected the county council, you'll no longer be a state senator. I'm curious, what is the thing that you're most proud of from your service in the legislature? <laughs> or what are a few <laughs> things that you can most? Thank you. Thanks.